Mercury in its pure form is a silvery liquid metal, which is also why it's known as quicksilver. It has many commercial and even in uh, domestic uses, some of which are now being phased out as it's replaced with other materials. The reason behind this phasing out is that mercury is toxic, both in its pure form and when combined with other elements like carbon and hydrogen to form methyl mercury. When liquid mercury is exposed to the air, a small proportion of the liquid mercury will turn into vapour, even at room temperature. But just being around mercury will mean that you're actually breathing in some of the mercury. However, because mercury tends to form a single large droplet, it actually has quite a small surface area relative to its mass. And you actually very little of it actually evaporates when it's combined together. However, if the liquid mercury is disturbed, it will break up into smaller and smaller droplets, which actually have a relatively large area compared to their mass, so it will actually evaporate far quicker. Also, due to this slow evaporation, it actually takes quite some time for high levels to build up. So unless the mercury is in a very poorly ventilated room for a very long time, the levels will still actually be very low. Mercury occurs naturally in all the rocks all around us, so a proportion is always in the atmosphere. This is actually increased by natural heat events such as volcanoes and forest fires which liberate substantial amounts of mercury into the atmosphere. However, there are two human activities which dramatically add to the amount of mercury in the environment. The first of these is the burning of coal, which is the most significant uh, human source of additional mercury into the environment. But heating of any rocks like iron ore smelting will also produce some additional mercury. The other major human source is in the gold mining industry, especially in small scale production. Now once the mercury enters into the environment, then combined with other elements, some will actually increase the danger levels to life of the actual mercury. This includes methyl mercury, which is actually more dangerous than pure mercury. Once in the human body, methyl mercury will actually be absorbed in the digestive process and then pass around the body, including specifically in pregnant mothers to any developing baby. This form of mercury binds strongly to proteins, is only slowly expelled from the body. This slow release also happens in other animals, including fish. This means that small marine creatures absorb this form of mercury retained within the body at a greater concentration than the general environment. When these creatures are then eaten by larger creatures, the toxic level in the creature also increases by about 10 times to that of the original prey. This continues up the food chain until it reaches creatures like sharks and tuna, which are the top predators, and they can have dangerous levels in their system, concentrated in internal organs and in the muscles. If these are then eaten by humans, the mercury compounds enter into our systems. The high levels of mercury in the human body can lead to things like heart attacks and brain damage. This vulnerability to mercury is greater in children and babies whose brains are still growing and developing. And whilst mercury is dangerous, it isn't something to panic over. Mercury spilled from a thermometer won't kill you. Adults eating fish as part of a balanced diet will not suffer any ill effects, as the fish is generally better for you than other food sources. However, a young child eating tuna every day may start to suffer as a result of the levels of mercury consumed. Closer controls on the burning of coal and the mining of gold are probably the best way to reduce the overall risk of mercury to humans.